Good morning, everyone, my, both here and online. My name is Nancy Bradley. I'm your volunteer minister. And by default, since Leah isn't here and since Pam isn't here, I'm going to make a few announcements. But the most important one is welcome. And welcome to Reverend Nan, who is here, as Father Bob is out of town seeing his daughter. Uh, the first thing is we would love it if you, uh, at the end of the row, if you could just sign your name in the guest book. It would let us know who's here and who's not. There is a card for Amanda Devinney, who has left Good Shepherd uh, to work at uh, St. Martin's. If you'd like to sign the card, it's in the narthex. Uh, tonight is the start of Family Promise this week. Uh, to my best knowledge, we have two families, a family of four and a mother and a child, and they will be uh, with us this week. If you um, have signed up to bring food or to be an overnight host, great. If you still want to do something, you can go online and sign up. Um, we are due to have a simple supper for the first of five Wednesdays, uh, and that will be at 545. Please do RSVP by going to a link in the voice so that we know for the hosts how much food and, um, and drink to have available. We hope you'll join us both for the light meal as well as a service to follow. Um, and all of you are invited after this service for coffee time, which will be um, in Sterling Hall. So thank you. Blessed be God, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. If we say we have... Let me get rid of this. <laughs> if we say we have no peace, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please join me in the confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. 
Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation mighty and po po populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first fruits of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set down it before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. God. Our psalm in your bulletin is most of Psalm 91. Let us read responsively by whole verse. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the, and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble and, he will re and I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With all my heart will I satisfy him and show him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. So the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil, when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The word is very near you, on your lips and in your heart. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is what our letter from Paul tells us. This is where Martin Luther came to his understanding that faith alone will save us, not what we do, but what we believe. When we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, then we have a Redeemer who will stand up for us in all circumstances. But when we believe, there are forces at work in the world around us that will try to draw us away from that love of God. When Jesus Christ was baptized, when he accepted God as his Father, when he came up out of the water refreshed and renewed in his faith, he went out into the desert to be with God, to contemplate what all this meant for him. When we believe, Satan throws temptations at us. If one doesn't work, he tries something else. If we resist that one, he throws something else at us, looking for the one thing 
that we will succumb to? Is it one of our creature comforts that we give in to? Maybe a secret desire for power or authority. Maybe for wealth or notoriety. Satan tempts us in the desert of our lives when we are the weakest. Some people really get hung up on the subject of Satan. Satan is the accuser. If you remember from the book of Job, Satan is the one who puts us to the test. Whether you want to think of Satan as a real being or a manifestation of evil or just that desire that lies outside of Christ to draw you away from Christ. Doesn't matter much. But it is important to acknowledge that there is something outside of our self that draws us away or wants to draw us away from the love and protection of of God. That something is what we are calling Satan or the devil. The word is very near you on your lips or in your heart and in your heart. The word is what Jesus used to counter all the attempts of Satan to draw him away from his calling. Jesus knew the word of God and he used it in every case when he was tempted. What we have to remember is that Satan knows the words of God just as well as we do, and he will use them against us. Scripture is given to us to be useful, not just to analyze it or to revel in it or to to memorize it, but so that it can be the primary guide of our life. Look at the examples that Jesus gives us here. Jesus is wandering around in the wilderness, a place where there is a lack of vegetation, a lack of animals, a lack of things that are needed to support life. And it says that he was out there for 40 days and he ate nothing at all. Now Satan appears when Jesus is in this weakened state. Just as he appears to us, when we are in a weakened state. And he tempts Jesus to do something to fill his empty stomach. He mocks him, if you are the Son of God, trying to get him to react. Oh, of course I'm the Son of God. How dare you question that? No, Jesus doesn't do that. He resists that temptation, just as he resists the challenge that is given. (laughs) He is being tempted to display and use the power of God for his own personal comfort. Jesus knows that that is not why he was given this power, and he responds with Scripture. One does not live by bread alone. He quotes Scripture. He uses Scripture to defend and explain his position to stave off the temptations of the devil. He resists this temptation for creature comforts. Now Satan took him up on a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. And he says, I will give you all that you see if you just bow down and worship me. Listen to that. We don't always understand. Jesus is being asked to give up heaven in order to have power on earth. He could have lived in a palace instead of walking dusty roads and sleeping on the ground. He could have been surrounded by all kinds of people to do his bidding. But Jesus knows who he is, and he knows where he belongs, and he answers Satan with, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. He resists that temptation of power and influence. For the third testing, Satan whisks him away to Jerusalem and places him on the pinnacle of the temple. Since you are the Son of God. Now, when I read it earlier, it was if you are the Son of God again. But if can also, the word that is used and translated if 
can also be translated sense. And I think that's at where, where Satan is at this point. Since you are the Son of God, I know you're the Son of God, since you're him, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. Hey, we just read that in Psalm 91. Notice here that Satan has listened to Jesus quoting Scripture, and so now he quotes Scripture to Jesus. He quotes Psalm 91. And I'm sure that the devil, being who he is, thought, let's see him counter this. And, of course, Jesus does. Do not put your Lord, the Lord your God to the test. You know, it's been said that Jesus is atoning for the sins of the Israelites when they wandered in the desert for 40 years. They clamored for bread. Jesus resists the temptation to make bread for himself. They made a golden idol, a calf, to worship. Jesus refuses to worship anyone or anything other than the Lord. The Israelites tested God over and over in the desert. Yeah, you gave us manna, but I bet you can't give us, give us meat. Jesus refuses to test God. And it says that Satan departed from him until an opportune time. We see temptation arise for Jesus one last time in the Garden of Gethsemane when he asked God, Father, take this cup from me. And he overcomes that temptation when he says, Yet not my will, but yours be done. You know, I've heard people talk about being tempted like it's a bad thing when it's actually just a part of everyday life. There are all kinds of little things that happen. Oh, I, I know I have a temptation to want to respond in a less than godly way when I hear certain things. I hear of people who have abused children or animals. Oh, <clears throat> I, yes, want to respond in maybe a less than holy way when I hear about what's going on in Ukraine. Just walking out the store and you pay for an item you buy and they give you back too much change. Tempted to keep it or give it back. All kinds of temptations. The, the guy that cuts you off driving down the road. Tempted to get mad about it. All kinds of things. Temptation is a part of life. It's something that happens to us on a daily basis to each and every one of us. All you have to do is watch TV, read the ra uh, listen to the radio, read the paper, look at billboards to find temptations abounding. It is not a sin to be tempted. <laughs> we see here that Jesus was tempted. When temptation becomes a sin is when we give in to it. What we need to remember is that occasionally we're going to give in to a temptation. That's human. And that's why we're given ways to be restored to the community of Christ when it happens. That's why we have confession every Sunday. We just have to remember that Jesus overcame temptation through the use of Scripture, living into the Word of God, remembering what the promises are. And we are given that same resource. The Word of God will be given to us, and we will see that Jesus, in Jesus, we see that in Jesus when he responds with Scripture when he is tempted by the devil. When we are tempted, we could do the same thing. In order to be able to respond with Scripture, 
in any given situation, you must have at least heard it or read it. So I commend to you during this Lenten season to spend some time in Scripture. To read the Word of God on a daily basis so that when your time of testing comes, you will be able to respond as Jesus did. Going into the Scriptures to find the Word is indeed very near to you. Listening to the scriptures read on Sunday morning. There are three scriptures read to you every Sunday morning and you recite a psalm. That's four scriptures every Sunday morning. So I will commend to you taking a look at your Bible, pulling it out. Either use a plan for reading it or open it up and just read what's there. When, when I was preparing for seminary or when I was trying to decide if I was actually being called to go to seminary and be ordained, uh, a, one priest friend of mine said, uh, why don't you just play a little Bible roulette and see what happens. And, and uh, so I opened up the Bible, you know, without looking and pointed my finger and looked down at it. And it was from um, Ezra. And it said, and he stood in this uh, courtyard and read scripture from morning to noon. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, it, it's very interesting what you will find in the Bible and what God will lead you to see, what God will lead you to hear, what God will lead you to to inform your life. So indeed, the word is very near to you. It's in your heart. Let it be in your heart. Let it be on your lips every day. Amen. Let us stand, if able, and recite, uh, affirm our faith in using the words of the Nicene Creed. It's found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all of our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace of the world and the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have 
For our bishop and for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our president, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city and every city and community and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Let us add a prayer for the election of a minister for Good Shepherd. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will guide your people and equip us for our ministries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the closing time, I would like to add another prayer. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions as we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. Oh, birthdays and anniversaries, sorry. Birthdays and anniversaries. Do we have anyone? Ah. Just almost forgot about that. Okay, birthday and birthdays, okay. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
and you are okay <laughs> you, you don't have to tell me that <laughs> I, I got you beat though i'll tell you that <laughs> you bless him god almighty father son and holy spirit be with you <laughs> bless him in jesus christ father son and holy spirit amen david Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs> now we will continue our worship. <laughs> We continue our worship with Holy Eucharist Rite 2, Prayer B. And I'll find it in just a minute. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are yet did not sin. By His grace we are able to triumph over every evil 
to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body and blood, uh, body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as Christ our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and he and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Okay. is the body of Christ. This is the
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would like to offer a poem written by Ann Weems for Ash Wednesday of 2003. I no longer pray for peace. On the edge of war, one foot already in, I no longer pray for peace. I pray for miracles. I pray that stone hearts will be turned to tenderheartedness and evil intentions will turn to mercifulness and all the soldiers already deployed will be snatched out of harm's way and for the whole world to be astounded onto its knees. I pray that all the God talk will take bones and stand up and shed its cloak of faithlessness and walk again in its powerful truth. I pray that the whole world might sit down together and share its bread and wine. Some say there is no hope, but then I've always applauded the holy fools who never seem to give up on the scandalousness of our faith that we are loved by God, that we can truly love one another. I no longer pray for peace. I pray for miracles. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. peace, to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.